How did they have fun in the Middle Ages? In the Middle Ages, having fun was not as easy as it is nowadays. Residents of that time spent their free time doing various things. One of the most popular entertainment activities was jousting tournaments. The knights competed in battle, demonstrating their dexterity and skill. Horse racing and other sports events were also held. Other common pastimes were holidays and festivals. Various festive events were held on these days, such as festive feasts, musical performances, dances, and theatrical performances. Card games, such as tarot and Spanish trick or treating, were also popular entertainment. Chess and checkers games were also often played in aristocratic circles. Various folk games and competitions were also popular entertainment. Some of them, such as javelin throwing or archery, have become the basis for the development of modern sports. In addition, people led an active lifestyle and engaged in physical exercises. Game hunting and fishing were also popular pastimes. In general, entertainment in the Middle Ages was associated with social events, sports, games, and outdoor activities. In those rare moments of rest, the residents of the estate used their leisure time to their own taste. The villagers preferred simple games and listened to stories about the exploits of the knights. Falconry and hunting with dogs were the favorite pastimes of the nobility. The lords and their wives took great pleasure in hosting wandering musicians and actors. In their castle, the seniors also loved to devote their free time to their favorite games of chess or dice. This was the lot of only the highest nobility. Their wives loved to listen to music and songs dedicated to the love. Of a beautiful lady, the knights were adherents of the cult of the Lady of the Heart. Some very noble lords and kings had a jester with them, whose duties included fulfilling the whims of the owners to raise their spirits. Rural children often played games without special devices, such as tag clock, high dance seek, and other similar games, many of which are still found in our yards today. Noble families had much more money, and knights could buy their children a variety of toys, wooden swords and shields, sometimes even small figures of soldiers. Now let's tell you a little more about falconry. This type of entertainment was very popular, not only in medieval Europe, but also in Russia and even Asia. Entertainment was not cheap, and the legislative framework of those times greatly limited the circle of people who were allowed to keep birds of prey. In some countries, only princes and the highest nobility had this right. This entertainment also required special training for falcons or other birds of prey. Bird teachers were called falconers. Birds were sometimes allowed to hunt freely, and in most cases the falconer twisted an artificial bait in the air, which the birds hunted. The knights loved not only to watch the hunt, but also to hunt themselves with great pleasure. Hunting combined entertainment, a source of meat on the table, and horse riding training. The favorite prey were large animals, wild boars, deer, etc. They also hunted small animals, such as hares, the poor caught birds, and small animals. As mentioned above, in those days they were very fond of listening to stories. Listening is precisely because many did not yet know how to read. So the stories were passed down from generation to generation. Favorite stories were stories about the mystical King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. In the, the 12th century, chivalric novels began to appear. Basically, the most common stories were about knights and the search for the Holy Grail. In the 16th century, almost all entertainment was banned by the church, including those that were available to the Tsar himself. The prohibitions are recorded in detail in Domostroy. The collection of rules and instructions regulating the life of medieval people refers to those who lead an unjust lifestyle, who do all sorts of ungodly deeds, fornication, debauchery, profanity, and shameful language, demonic songs, dancing, and jumping playing tambourines, pipes, snuffles, get bears and birds, and hunting dogs, and arrange horse races. In the chapter on the unrighteous life, among the sins, the following are listed, who goes hunting with dogs and birds and bears, and does everything, pleasing, to the devil, buffoons with their craft, dances and games, loves demonic songs, and is fond of dice and chess. Demostroy unequivocally forbade all kinds of entertainment during the feast, and if there are shameless speeches, fornication, laughter, mockery, harps, dancing, clapping, antics, and all sorts of games and demonic songs, then, like smoke drives away bees, the angels of God will depart from such a meal and stinking conversation. 
As you can see, the list is extensive. Not only buffoons with their demonic songs were banned, but also hunting and even playing chess. The latter related to gambling, along with grain and dice games, a chess piece, 16th century. It was discovered in 2008 during archaeological excavations on the territory of the Alexandrovskaya Sloboda Museum Reserve. How did the first Russian Tsar circumvent the prohibitions, as I, Zabelin wrote in his fundamental book, The Domestic Life of Russian Tsars. In the 16th and 17th centuries, apparently, the palace did not think at all that all this was renounced and cursed by paternal teachings. Because for the manufacture of, for example, a chess game, special master turners lived at the palace on a special salary, who were called chess players, and only did what chess and other games worked. It is known that Ivan IV was a passionate chess player. The English envoy Jerome Gorset, in his notes on Russia, left an entry that shortly before his death, the Tsar ordered the pieces to be placed on the chess table. Why be? Pekarovsky, Ivan the Terrible at Chess. It is exhibited at the Exposition Legends and Traditions of the Alexandrovskaya Sloboda, of the Alexandrovskaya Sloboda Museum Reservoir besides chess. Grozny also loved hunting. According to the famous local historian N.S. Stromolov, there was a falconry and a kennel in Alexandrova Sloboda. Unlike his father Vasily III, who loved hunting with hunting birds, Ivan Vasilyevich preferred dog hunting for a bear. The animals were not only killed, but also captured for placement in bear cages.